Carlson versus Caruana. White now played a5, and after knight c8, b5. Take, knight takes b5, and white is making progress on the queen side. Let's find out what happened in this game. Here we see the group A standings. Carlson, Artemi of Nakamura Grishuk through to the quarterfinals. And today we have the quarterfinals day one. Carlson Caruana and Artemiev Nepom. In this video, I want to cover a Carlson victory over Caruana. Let's check out this game now. By the end of this video, you'll also be able to answer the following key points. Carlson has white, Caruana has black. The game began. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, and knight c3. Caruana now plays a6, planning to take on c4 and then go b5. Because of that, Carlson took on d5. Another move, you can play e3 or you get the bishop out first. But after e3, you give black this option, take, take, b5, when the bishop moves anywhere, c5. Another option is if white moved the bishop out. Black has this option of taking on c4, and wherever you go, e3 or e4, then b5, e5, h6. Black is doing okay. That's why in the opening, after a move like a6, it's important for white to take on d5. So in this game, take, take, and now bishop g5. Bishop e6, holding the center, e3, knight d7, and h3, stopping a piece coming to g4. Bishop d6, bishop d3, c6, with ideas of b5, putting the queen on c7. Carlson now plays bishop f4, because the bishop on d6 is strong, so let's get rid of it. Queen c7 played. Now you don't want to take the bishop, because after take, white's got ideas of f5, and if you play g6, then white can play f5 later. Castle first, and then try to break up the structure on the king side. Black doesn't give white this option, so after bishop f4, queen c7. Forcing the exchange, even though here white could play queen d2, because queen d2 defends the bishop. After take, take, we get a very similar thing, but Caruana doesn't want that. After queen c7, Carlson took, take back, and now castle, castle, queen b3, and rook a, b8. Now we have part two, the middle game. After rook a, b8, Carlson gains space on the queen side with a4. It also discourages black from playing b5. Rook e8, queen a3, offering a queen trade, which black rejects. He tucks the queen back. If you trade queens, the ending might be unpleasant for black. Take. White wants to gain space on the queen side. So let's stop it with a5, but rook b1, and we're going b4 next. If king f8, let's say, just getting the king to the center. b4, take, take, there's some pressure for white. So Caruana tucks the queen back to c7. Rook c1, knight b6, and now b4. And here, black plays a very clever move, putting the rook back to its original square with rook a8. Very clever, but another option was knight c4, and if played, maybe the game becomes very long. Knight on c4 looks steady, and we can give it some backup with b5. Let's move the queen. You don't want to take the knight, because it gives black a pass pawn here, and it's well protected by the bishop. Maybe it gets support with b5 even though you can stop it with a5, but the game goes on. Maybe bishop d5 here, let's say. Now after knight c4, queen b3, b5. Knight e2, 
trying to reroute, maybe it can go to f4, knight e4, rook a2, planning to double, queen e7, we can take, take, rook a1, the game goes on. After b4, rook a8, very clever move. The point of this is to stop white from playing b5. It's not possible because you take and then the pin on the a file works in black's favor. So Carlson, as you saw at the beginning of this video, played a5 instead. Knight back to c8 and then b5. The a file does not open, but white uses the c file. Take and knight b5. White is making progress. Queen d8, knight back to c3. We have a target. White has a target on b7, but black defends it with knight d6. This is a typical way to defend the b7 pawn in the Carlsbad structures of the queen's gambit declined. Queen b4 putting some more pressure. Queen e7 and now a6. Carlsen is trying to break up this structure. a6. b takes a6. Now we have a new target on c6. But, but Carlsen takes on a6 first. You can play knight e5. Because a6 is still hanging, you might as well get a knight in the game. So knight e5 was possible. So let's just have a look at a few options. If you go rook c8, then knight a4. Knight can come to b6, forking both rooks. Also, this rook on c1 is now also attacking the c6 pawn. If you play, let's say, knight c4, encouraging a queen trade, then knight c6 attacking the queen and protecting your own. I want to show you this line because just a tactic coming up if the queens come off and you kick the knight away. This knight is a bit loose now, only being defended by the pawn on d5. So we can take it first and then this knight is going to drop. So if you take with the bishop, so then the bishop still protects the knight, we can get rid of it. Take, take, bishop c4 and white is winning. One more option after knight e5, maybe rook b8, attacking the queen, but the queen is well placed on this diagonal. So I think it'd be good to keep it on this diagonal. So let's put it on c5. This is going to drop, this is going to drop. White is making serious progress on the queen side. Back to the game. After a6, take, rook takes a6, take, take, and rook a8. Bishop back to f1, all the way back keeping more pieces in the endgame. You may have asked why not put it on d3. But black wants to trade this bishop. So bishop f5, and if you take, take, there's less pressure on the c6 pawn. So we don't want to trade pieces as white. Bishop all the way back to f1. Knight c8, and same situation. We don't want to trade queens, so let's drop it back. Keeping queens on to put more pressure on c6. Knight d7, knight e2, a bit of rerouting. This knight will go to f4. And now this rook is useful. Attacking c6. This is white's middle game strategy. Attacking the c6 pawn. Rook b8, let's put the queen here. Still attacking c6, rook b6 defense, queen a5. Queen d6, knight f4. Knight e7, and now a surprising move based on a tactic. Carlsen now played knight takes bishop. This piece has been on e6 since move 6. Now it is move 32. Why would you grab this horrible bishop? Because in this position there are two ways for black to capture. With the queen or the pawn. Now in the game pawn takes was played. But let's have a look at queen takes. And this is losing. Because the back rank is weak. Notice the knight on d7 is protecting the rook. So if we can play a move to deflect the knight, then we're good. Can you see the move? I'll give you five seconds. The move is knight e5. Rook back to b8. Or else you lose the rook. And then queen into c7, attacking both rook and knight. So if you go rook c8, we can grab the knight. Back to the game, Carlsen played knight takes e6, Caruana quickly recaptured. But this is still the great thing about white's position, he still plays knight e5. Rook back to b8 and queen a7. Attacking the knight on d7 and 
knight takes e5 played in the game. Just want to show you if rook d8, then we can get white's rook now in the game. No longer best placed on the c file. Let's shuffle over to the b file. Rook b1 coming into b7 on the 7th rank. Knight takes e5. If black plays this, then d takes e5. And there's a problem with the black queen. It cannot go on any good square to protect the knight. If you played queen d7, then rook b7 will win the knight. So knight c8 is the best move because you are attacking white's queen. Queen into a8. If you take the pawn, then rook b8. And we've got pressure on the back. If queen c7, bishop a6, we're just in time winning the knight. So whatever black plays now, let's say c5, things are coming off in white's favour. Check. Take. And we're in time. King f7, the bishop can come back. This king is definitely in time to stop the pawn. White is winning. After queen a7, black played knight takes e5, take, and now queen d8, covering everything. Same problem here, you can't take on e5 because the queen grabs the knight. So queen back to d8, protecting the rook and the knight. The knight protects the pawn. Notice Carlson's pieces are all doing a great job. The queen is on the seventh rank. The rook is on the c file. The only thing doing nothing is the bishop, so why not get it into the game? Bishop e2 played. Black's pawn structure is static. By that I mean he can't move it. King in the corner. Bishop g4. And there's no good way to defend e6. If the queen goes to c8, once again, the queen on a7 is so useful, it's attacking the knight on e7. Knight g6, let's defend with f4. Rook a8 and queen c5. Both e6 and c6 are hanging. Queen e8, queen takes c6. The c6 pawn has been a weakness the entire game. It is white's middle game strategy and he's won it. Queen takes c6, take take. Now we've reached part three, the end game. Let's see the rest. The pawn on e6 is going to drop, so black throws in d4 because when this pawn captures this, black's knight can capture the f4 pawn, which is what happened. e takes d4, knight takes f4 and g3, kicking the knight away. Knight d3, bishop takes e6, Rook check, king g2, white is threatening checkmate in one on the back, so black can give some room with g6 or h6. He chooses g6, bishop back to c4, knight b4, rook c8, check, king g7, d5, and in this position, Caruana resigned. For example, if we played on a little bit, let's say you go rook e1, just going behind the pawns. Let's push e6, let's get the king closer. You can go d6 even, because then this bishop is protecting this. So then what's next? e7, d7, you just can't stop it. Later on, Carlsen went on to win 2.5, 1.5. It's a four-game match, best of four, and he won 2.5, 1.5. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. Here are the key points in the opening. Bring back the bishop to f4 to trade off black's bishop on d6. In the middle game on move 17, black can play knight c4. Then white will play around the knight. Unexpected pawn break with a5, then b5. White's strategy is to loosen the b7, c6, d5 pawn chain. Then target the c6 pawn. We see this often in Carlsbad structures. The middle game tactic, white played knight takes e6, then knight e5. Using the back rank. If you enjoyed the show, if you think you've got a little bit better at chess having watched this video, then subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell, then you'll get notified each time I release a new video. How to support the channel? There's a donation link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end.